Hi, my name is Per Moneo. And my name is Irene Moneo. And we have bought a 30 year old Soundchecks Jade analog mixing console. And this is our adventure restoring it, making it shine and sound as good as it possibly can. And today is really important. We have something to take care of that can really ruin this kind of desk. Inside the console there are two backup batteries that will remember all the settings for the dynamic processors, all the mutes and the VCAs. So these batteries are 30 years old, so they need to be replaced. To change batteries in these kinds of consoles, it's not as simple as it sounds. No, no. You need to ask the lizard how you're going to do this. Because there are no service hatch that can open and just replace the battery. No, no, no. The batteries are soldered onto the PCBs. One battery is located right under the master section. And the other battery is located somewhere here under the first eight channel strips. So let's dive in right now. Okay, so we start by pulling out, say, channel 4 and just see where the first battery is. We don't know exactly where it is and I think we need to pull out maybe 8 channel strips to get to the PCB where the first battery is. But we start with channel 4. We have it. Yeah, and actually I can see the battery, it's under here. So we pull the first three channels and see what it looks like. So we have taken away the first four channel strips and now we start to see the batteries. So have a look down here. And right there we can see the 30 year old Varta battery. And this is a site that we did not want to see. There are battery acid has leaked out from the battery. Of course, because it's so old. And it might have gone down to the PCB and damaged some traces, if we are unlucky. At some consoles, it also damaged the components next to it. But it doesn't look like it has done that uh, on this one, as far as we can see at the moment. But we have to pull out this PCB card and see what it looks like and change this one as quickly as we can. Oh my god. This was not what we wanted to see, but it was at the same time kind of expected. But we hoped that it wasn't that damaged. Let's rip more channels out and take that PCB away. Okay, so we had to take away 14 channels to get to the battery. That's kind of insane, but uh, yeah, I don't think it's meant to be changed that very often. So now we're back at the console and have a big hole here with all the faders gone. And now let's have a look. So here we have the circuit board uh, with the battery that we are going to take away. So we need to unplug these two cables. We have to unplug these two cables. And we have to unplug these ribbon cables. 
and there's a ribbon cable there as well. And we have took some picture before, so we remember the position and what is going where. Okay, so we will start with the first ribbon cable. Pull it up, bring it up here. There we have it. That's the first one. Now we have the second one. Okay. And we have these power cables. Okay, so then we have these one, two, three, four, five, six, eight ribbon cables. The great thing doing these YouTube movies is that if we at a later point forget where all the cables are going, then we just have to go to YouTube and check it out on our own channel. That's kind of neat. This is really tight. And now we have just one more cable to go. That one up there. Okay, there we have it. Now we just need to take the circuit board away and it's these plastic connectors here. Yeah, that way. That's the way to do it. I think we have them all loose here. Feel it. Yeah. Ah. Here we have it. Woo! <laughs> Man, that was quite challenging actually. And there we have the battery that we are going to take away. Ah. Okay, this is good. Now let's bring the soldering station. So here we have the board. Finally, it was kind of a struggle and I mean, you don't want to push it too hard because it's so fragile. It's a pretty large board. So, yeah. And as we can see here, it's the console is, as far as I know, from 1994. On the board, it says 1992 soundtracks. So the PCB seems to be designed 92. I guess there were quite some production time to get a console like this going so maybe two years from designing the PCB to the final console in the stores. And we also have the answer here mute CPU board. So it seems like yeah what I thought this has to do with automation. It's the board that controls the MIDI mutes. And I believe the MIDI mutes works without the computer. We'll have to see. But it also feels kind of weird if there needs to be a PCB board of this size to just handle the MIDI mutes. Wow. Then it starts to think what would the board handling the VCA looks like? Oh my. And it's really, really dirty. We have to clean it with some smaller brush. Now we can get a closer look to the battery and it's really bad. And if we look closer here we can also see that there's a 
it seems like there's a trace on the PCB that has broken because of the acid from the battery. We will remove the battery and see how bad it is. And we will not mount a new battery like this. We will mount a battery that is easy to change and easy to service. And we are going to say goodbye to this one. To remove this battery we could of course take the soldering iron and heat it up and remove it. But I don't want to put so much heat on the circuit board because it's old. Too much heat on this circuit board can mean that the traces will lift and loosen from the board itself. So we don't want to apply too much heat to the circuit board. So instead we just cut the legs to the battery. We have one leg. Let's see if we can get the other one. There we have the other one. And then we immediately start to see that the acid from the battery is coming away. It's like it's kind of dried battery acid. And here we have the third and last leg. It's almost off here, so you can maybe use the plier to get it away. Yeah, and now we just get rid of the what's left of the legs. And stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And then we take this one. Yep. And we have another long one next to it. Great. Oh. <laughs> oh, it feels so good to have it off the circuit board. Finally. Ah. Let's have a look at it here. Have a close look and we can see that yeah, it's maybe there's a track that is broken or maybe not. Oh, I, it might be, or maybe not broken. It maybe had had worked out fine. <laughs> okay, so we are going to check if the traces have been broken with this multimeter, which has a sound that we can listen to if there is connection or not. So we keep our fingers crossed that we will hear a sound when we check this trace. Okay, here we go. There we have the first one, and here's the trace that we are thinking about. And then here we have the end point. Ah, did you hear it? Woohoo! That means that the trace is not broken, and we don't have to fix that trace. Because that can happen sometimes that the traces get broken, and you have to solder new ones. But we don't have to do it with this one. Woo! So the idea of soldering a battery to the circuit board seems like a really stupid idea. And yeah, I think so too. But it seemed like it was not just only soundtracks doing that at that time. Because that's a solution even Midas console have been doing and probably a couple of others at that period. I have no idea what the benefit would be to solder it to the circuit board, but it seems like that was the way to do it at that time. So today's mission is to change this battery into this one. And it's a different one. But what's important is this is 3.6 volt. And this one is also 3.6 voltage. This is not a standard 1.5 volt battery. This is a 3.6 volt. This one has 100 milliampere hour, and this one has 14,500. So this one should last longer than this one. 
I think they marketed this one as it should last for about 10 years, but who knows? But this format is also very easy to replace if we do it in the right way. And we are not going to solder this one onto the circuit board. Nope. We're going to have a wire and put this one elsewhere. So we start and solder this wire to the circuit board. Yeah. We just pre-solder this so that it gets easier to put them in. Going to solder this one to the battery holder. And just make sure that the positive is on this side. And we have one side of the cable has markings. This one that has to be positive. Let's see, it can be quite difficult to solder on straight onto these battery holders. We can give it a try. to get it to stuck <laughs> and it melts the plastic melts oh. it's not what we wish but that's what it's like and we do the other one and this is one that we have already used so it's already had some perfect I don't have to heat it too much that's the negative side and that's the one that's unmarked. Nice. Is it beautiful? It looks good. Yeah, it works. And we have the other side. I think this is fine. Yeah. Okay, so we have this bottle that is going to hold the battery. So it will be safe inside the console. And I guess you can take any bottle, but this is a little bit more thicker plastic. It's from an outdoor store. So this is made for containing food, which seems to be a good idea. Thicker plastic can be a good idea since the battery acid might affect plastic as well. I don't know, but thicker plastic seems like a better idea than not thick plastic. We need to make a hole in the top. And we want the hole to be not too big, but just big enough so that the cable can pass through it. There we have it. Okay, so time to solder the cable from the battery into the circuit board. And actually the soldering is on top here. There we have it. So, and we'll just double check that we put it the right way. And we have the positive here. This is the positive, and that's the marked wire all the way going there. Yeah. Here we have the positive, and here the negative. Perfect. Okay, so we have soldered on the new cables for the 
separate battery. And when having a look at the board we realized that it's quite dirty actually. So we are going to clean it. The first thing we are going to clean is where the battery was and make sure that the chemical reaction from the acid stops. And we will do that by using baking soda. Good for baking cakes. Great for stopping acid. So let's bring some baking soda as the first step. This is the first time we do this, so we hope we get it right. So we just put some baking soda onto the It was on this side that the acid were. And we are going to use vinegar and just use a cotton tip. And I think there will be kind of a chemical reaction with these two. And we've seen people using only baking soda and we've seen people using only vinegar. So I think they both are good for making acid stop. Maybe something like that. Okay, so it has been sitting for maybe two minutes. Just clean it off with some water. And I mean, we can't see any visual rest of the acids, but it feels kind of good to do this procedure anyway. So we're making sure that the chemical reaction actually stops. Yeah, maybe something like that. Okay, so now we just keep on cleaning the rest of the circuit board with countertops and water. It's not very often you get the chance to clean the circuit board on your mixing console. So dirty that the uh, tip is all black. 30 years of, uh, well, dust. Anyway, lots of everything. I believe this is the first console I have that have got this kind of attention and love. I think this cotton tips is almost a bit big to get to every little surface in between here. Yeah. I don't know. It doesn't change a couple of tips very often, so it's so we're keeping it clean at all times. Gonna look so good when we're done with this. Oh, yeah. And I guess we can change the tips quite often. We have thousands of them. Literally, we have thousands of them. So using one wet side and one dry cell side works pretty well, it seems like. If you just have a look at this one and here, the difference is quite remarkable. Here we have cleaned the circuit board and here it's not cleaned. You can see all the darts in here. And that is the dart that we want to get away. Yeah, 
And that is some beautiful work. You can almost see it's very black because you need to go over it several times. I mean, these boards have been sitting inside, so I mean, 30 years, yes, but I mean, it's been closed in, yeah. inside, so. It doesn't seem like there's any ventilations fan inside the console. If there would have been ventilation fan there, it could be the blowing air and dust, but it doesn't have that. It just have the ventilation holes, but no fans. So it's quite remarkable how dirty it can be in a closed environment. If you have a console that you want as clean as this, can you just sell it to us? <laughs> I mean, it's worth every penny. I mean, we charge a thousand bucks an hour, but it will be really beautiful. <laughs> or you can buy yourself some cotton tips and do it yourself. And it will take lots of time to do this. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> it will be worth it. We have just started over here and I have all these left. You want to be careful because you don't want to damage this, the circuits. It's hard to replace these old ones. Yeah. I believe many of these circuits are made for this console, I would guess. Some maybe is standard, but I believe many of these are difficult to get. This seems like a specially programmed EEPROM-like circuit. So I think we should be very careful about this one because this one is not going to be able to replace. So I just clean that with the dried sides. I think this looks amazing. I think this, this would be fine, yeah. Okay, maybe we should speed up the process a bit. Yeah. Okay, so have a look at this circuit board. It's like a Brand new one, almost. Yeah, what do you say? Happy? I'm very happy. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah, that is some real love. Yeah. How many boards do we have left? Oh my god. We're not gonna clean all the boards. <laughs> I think there might be, could it be 20 boards, 25? Plus the 33 channel strips. So we will be done when we're about 100 years old then? Yeah. Or something? But it will be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, that's it. That's it. So now when we have uh, opened up the console here, we might as well take away some dirt and dust that's been laying here for 30 years under all these cables. So uh, let's see what we can do about it. So it can be a bit better. I think anything can be better here. It's a lot. You see, it's black. Mm -hmm. I think I need some more moist on this. I mean, 
it's it's dirty. Well, anyway, that's half. much better even if you can't reach exactly everywhere I think it looks amazing it's a big difference well that's that so great so time to put back this circuit board now when we have cleaned this area Okay, I think we have all the cables at the right place. That's one snooze. Yeah. Then we just snap it back. So the layout of this console's PCBs make it just a walk in the park to put together again. It's, it seems like it's pretty difficult to make the wrong connections here. All the connectors are lined up so, so very well. With the perfect cable length making it a breeze. Yeah, there we go. And we have these ones. The two over here. And we have these two power connectors that if you forget how to connect them it's always good to pick up your phone where we have the picture so we can see that they're going to uh, let's see where do we have them it's the last one and this one so this really makes it super clear and we can see on the picture here on the phone that this one is not connected and we have four slots that are not con connected either. Okay, so we have this plastic bottle that we are putting the battery inside and we want to place it inside the console and we are going to use Velcro for that. And we just attach it to the side of the bottle. Here we go. Velcro looks beautiful. So here we have the battery connected that we made. And let's mount the battery. Just double check. It's the right direction. Here we go. And then we just put the battery into the bottle. Put the lid on. And we don't want this one to just laying around here and rattle around. So we will attach it on the side. So I put in the first channel strip here so that you can see where we got some space left. And it seems like over here, like something like this could be a good idea. Put it like this. There we go. Then it's very easy to just attach it. And it's very easy to take away and service. And to change the battery. Woo! Finally! 
So now we'll just put in the 14 channel strips and uh, keep on going with battery number two. Okay, so now it's time for the second battery and that one is located somewhere around here in the master section and this is kind of crucial because there are so many ribbon cables under here and they are feeling pretty fragile. So we have to be really really careful to get this circuit board out but let's open it up and see what it looks like. Now we need to get this one up and I guess we will just There we have it. And we can see the battery here. Oh man. And we really don't want to unplug the ribbon cables, I believe. Because these ones seems very fragile. So maybe we can do it in another way. Maybe I just have to put something here so that we can check it out a bit closer. Okay, so here we have a um, leg from an IKEA table. I mean, we're from Sweden, right? It's like popping a hood on a car and now I finally get to see what it looks like here. And the battery we want to get loose is that one and actually it's sitting on a smaller circuit board than the previous one. So it's just this board that we need to take away. So it seems like it's these one, two, three, four, five cables, this ribbon cable and one small ribbon cable behind there. And then we should just be able to take it loose. Oh my god. We'll give it a try, see what happens. Seems like there are four screws here. Looks like this was the last screw, or am I missing something? Yes, I see is, it. Is there one left? It's these small oh. ones here. You see this one, this pig here, over here. Yeah. You have to they bend are. it over it or something and there's more. These ones also. What the heck is that one? It's the rotor. And these ones. Oh, that feels scary. Is that the only ones? I think we have to think about this. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we're just putting this one back. And just have a break. Okay, so we're a little bit stuck here and we really don't know why the card is grabbing on so hard. So yeah, we made a short film with the iPhone and just put it up on the Jade forum and see what people think about it. Because there's so much great knowledge out there and hopefully we can get some tips which is probably better than we us just experimenting and trying things out that we really don't know anything about. Yeah, I think that's a wise decision to do, not to rush into things, but research, learning how to do things, that's the way to go. So we'll continue with battery number two in the next video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel Hit the like button, write a comment below. So until the next video, have a great time. 
take care of yourself and your family. Enjoy the summer and see you in the next video. Ciao!